So first off, I'm going to talk about the concept of turning soil health into soil wealth. And my focus here is going to be kind of primarily on kind of the land valuation side of, of soil health as a driver, but also uh, water quality kind of as a key parameter uh, as well. Before I start, I'd like to give a bit of a shout out to uh, Dr. Doug Carlin. Doug, you want to raise your hand here in front. Um, uh, without the opportunity that he gave me as a young graduate student back in 1989 to dive into the fascinating world of uh, soil health, I'd definitely not be standing here today. And there's definitely a long and very convoluted path uh, in my career before I come back here to the soil health world, but definitely a, a key uh, touch point is uh, my early start with, uh, with, uh, with Doug. Back then, back in 1989, as the Soil Tilth Lab was just opening up, we were focused on soil tilth as, as uh, the buzzword of the time, and the Soil Tilth Laboratory um, was the namesake of where we worked. And I spent many days and, and nights with this uh, uh, wet aggregate stability uh, uh, tool here, I believe developed at, at Kimberly, um, at, uh, Idaho, if I'm correct, and um, a lot of time drying these tins and weighing and trying to determine the relative stability based on farming system. At that time, we were talking about alternative agriculture versus conventional agriculture, and a very intensive, very uh, multidisciplinary team looking at the biological, chemical, and, and physical uh, issues. And so it's just really fascinating for me to see that early work now morphing into this kind of a group and this kind of a focus with folks like General Mills and, and others engaged. It's really come uh, a very long way. And, uh, it's cool to have been um, involved for that length of time. So thank you again, Doug, for that, uh, that opportunity. Um, first, just a bit of an introduction about um, the organization that I work for. I'm with the Iowa Agriculture Water Alliance, and our mission is around increasing the pace and scale of farmer-led efforts to improve water quality. Our founding organizations were the Iowa Corn Growers Association, the uh, Iowa Pork Producers, and the Iowa Soybean Association. And essentially our mission is really driven by implementation of the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy, which in turn is driven by Gulf hypoxia. But we're trying to, uh, through voluntary efforts to accelerate the pace of adoption of practices and improve water quality uh, just as quickly as, as we can. And we do that through many, many different partners and uh, several of them are present uh, here in the room today. Uh, but first, uh, our executive director, uh, Sean McMahon, who is not able to be here today, uh, provided this scenario. So I want to give him credit uh, for this as, as I walk through. A few of you may have, have seen this already. But um, I'd like to start off with uh, selling you this used truck. Now suppose I'm only going to show you this 15-year-old picture of the truck, and I'm not going to give you any information regarding its condition, its mileage, and you can't look under the hood. Um, so how do you feel about that? Everybody ready to give me an offer on this 15-year-old truck? Maybe not too much enthusiasm for that yet. Now let's pretend that there's a real shortage of trucks and that you have to bid on my truck. You really need a truck right now, and everybody else in this audience of 325 is going to bid on this too, and so you've got to make a decision based on that limited information. Well, the way we buy farmland today is a lot like buying a used truck without the necessary information to make an informed decision. Farmers and investors take a leap of faith when purchasing farmland. Now, typically, all there is to gauge the productivity and hence the value is some soil map unit based productivity index. In Iowa, we use the CSR2 corn suitability rating, and other states probably use various tools. But it's basically that, and maybe some outdated yield data is what you have to go with typically. These productivity ratings just give kind of an old picture of what potential for yields might be. However, it doesn't tell us if the soil's been mined for nutrients, what the soil health is or the level of soil erosion since that soil map was created. When you stop to think about it, it's kind of crazy to think that we might spend $7,000, $10,000 an acre, at least in terms of, of Iowa landscapes, uh, for land, for, to purchase farmland when we're completely in the dark when it comes to fertility information, soil organic matter, 
physical characteristics and biological indicators, just groping in the dark, making large investments. It might even be crazier that we don't know how much topsoil is, is left. In Iowa, we've lost typically half of what we started with uh, a century or more ago, and which would be worth more money, all things being equal. A field with a full depth of topsoil or a field with half. It's huge in your economic decision on, on whether to purchase. The same would go for mileage on my beautiful used truck here. Would you pay more or less for a truck with twice the mileage or half the mileage, all the other things being equal? Of course, you'd pay more for the lower mileage vehicle. Well, the soil, of course, is the engine of productivity um, for our farmland. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to buy this truck without knowing about the mileage. Now, imagine a day in the not too distant future when there's a widely accepted metric for measuring soil health. We're on our way, but just imagine that that day. Such a soil health metric would send the right market signals to producers and to landowners to adopt the right conservation practices that are known to improve soil health. Things like no-till, strip-till, and, and the cover crops we've talked about so much here today. Landowners will want to adopt these practices because it would make their land more valuable at some point when they're ready to sell. It would forever change the dynamic between non-operator land, uh, uh, between uh, landowners and, and the farmers that operate their land. Just think about it. If there were a widely accepted soil health metric, a landowner or a farm manager acting on their behalf could say to that operator, my soil health metric value is 70 on a scale of 0 to 100. I want to work with you to increase that number through no-till and cover crops to say 75. If you can get it there, I'll give you a break on rent. Furthermore, if you take it another five points up, I'll give you another break uh, on uh, the payment of rent. And that would be good for farmers, would be good for farm managers and operators, and of course for society uh, at large to have that driver. Would also help it, uh, address the lack of incentives for conservation that we currently face with the common one-year rental contracts, which are really a huge part of agriculture in, in Iowa anyway. What farmer wants to pay a lot of money for conservation practices when there's no certainty they'll be farming the land next year? The incentives are very low. You know, in cover crops, you might have a five-year time frame of really seeing the benefit of that. In a one-year lease, that just doesn't work. But a conversation about soil health between the landowner and an operator could potentially look past that one-year horizon with a, key, with a soil health metric as part of the discussion. People's Company is an Iowa-based farm management and real estate company. They've calculated that if you can increase your soil health to the point where you improve yields by 10 bushels an acre, if we had $4 corn, we're not there now, but if we had $4 corn and a 4% capitalization rate, the value of that would be $1,000 an acre. That's becoming real money, and uh, I think it's a realistic scenario. And so kind of for some, some summary comments, we're definitely looking for that soil health metric with the chemical, physical, and biological indicators. We definitely need that in terms of soil and uh, uh, valuation and the driver that that can give us towards accomplishing conservation. And topics they don't have time to dive into but are definitely relevant to the economic concerns of soil health and soil wealth are issues of resilience to climate extremes and uh, potential discussions with uh, agricultural lenders at, as well. And so there's a lot to this equation of soil health and soil wealth that we can all work on uh, together um, to get the work done that we need to do. I think we're all going to benefit from more information about soil health. Um, that will make landowners, operators, and farm managers more money by making uh, conservation uh, more profitable. Again, sending those right market signals to help them make the things happen that, that need to happen. Kind of bringing this back to the Iowa scenario, again, my focus and my current position is all about water quality. We are not going to achieve our goals on water quality in Iowa without a large input of strip-till and no-till, especially on the particulate phosphorus and sediment side, 
and cover crops for both nitrate and phosphorus. We're going to need a lot of both. And water quality is one driver, and the extent to which we can make uh, soil health and, and the profitability and valuation around land uh, as drivers, we're very excited to see that and are very interested in advancing um, soil health as a concept to help us reach our goals in terms of water quality. And I'm very interested in hearing what our, our next speakers have to say about um, what's happening in the policy realm on uh, both the federal and the state level that might help advance these concepts in moving conservation uh, forward. Thank you, Gary. Oh, thank you.